if you have a 1% edge, 2% edge, 3% edge, what kind of difference does that make? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, for example, the coin toss. Like I said to you earlier, after two flips, if you're just flipping it two times, the chances of you being in profit is high. It's 75%. Yeah. But the profit is then just going to be so marginal. It's going to be either $2 or $2, 50% of the time, or it's going to be uh, $204, 25% of the time, or minus 225% of the time, which is a big swing. Hmm. But according to uh, the, the research we did, it's close to 50% chance of being even after 100 flips. But that's just being even. What does what it doesn't take into account is what's the chances of being negative 500 versus being positive 500. Because after 100 flips, if you make on average a uh, dollar every time, you're going to be looking at making $100 on expectations over 100 flips. Okay. So, so basically but, it's more likely that you'll end up with being a hundred dollars or something plus than it is for you to lose the hundred dollars right yeah so that if you look at statistics there if you lose 49 i win 49 and lose uh 51 which can easily happen mm -hmm. uh you're going to be down so it's a 50 percent chance of being down or up but if, if you even if you lose 49 you're going to be down uh, is it two bucks or something? Well, I mean, then it's, it's not a huge loss for you. But if the other way goes, like, you win 51, you're then looking at, like, 100, 200 profits. So, I mean, it's just... The same goes for betting. Over 100 bets, it's easy to be up or down. It doesn't matter too much. But the more you, the more volume you put in, and, for example, if you do a 2% edge, it's a 46% chance of being stuck and 54% chance of making money. 3% edge, it's a 42% chance of being up and 58%, like 42% chance of being down and 58% chance of being up. So, I mean, it's just about to, you just need to grind it out. You know, you're expected to make money, like you said, with the coin toss example with your teacher. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's just get your grinding gloves on, put on some bets, and hope for the variance to be on the, your side. If it's not on your side, don't get too sad about it. It's just swings, and it's normal. It's how it is. That's why it's important not to uh, bet for too much at one given bet, because there will be times you lose maybe even 10 bets in a row, and it will be times where you just win 10 bets in a row. But that should not impact your first of all your mood and also your bankroll too much obviously you will take a hit when you lose 10 bets in a row there's no saying and no, it's impossible to avoid that but uh um just gotta grind it out and eventually like for example after a thousand bets if you have a three percent edge it's 18 percent chance of being down two percent edge 27 percent chance of being down and 1% is like just below 39%. So it's it's always going to be a chance of losing, but if you also try to avoid getting the majority of your bets on 1%, you can also skew it like you're betting more the higher edge you have, which is what we're calculating. Like we're calculating how much you should bet depending on the risk of the bet losing, what's your expected return, and how much you got to bet for. So when you look at all those things, I think it's just, yes, you will have more money on some games. But for example, if your teacher told you like, hey, we can 10 double the stake on, the, on this coin toss, yeah, you yeah. would be happy to do so. Yeah. But yeah. if I said to you, um, I can give you 20x on, on the flip we're doing, if that would be substantial money to you, you might not wouldn't do it because... If you lose, you lose too much of your money. Yeah, yeah. And, and if that's the case, well, okay, you should take less risk, but you should still get it on, get on some action. 
Yeah, so it, it's it's a matter of you know your risk aversion, your level of risk aversion, how much money you can afford to lose, and still walk away feeling comfortable if you don't have that money in your bank account. Yeah, I mean it's a way of handling swings. For example, if you have, uh, uh, so for myself, I'm 26 years old now. I don't have any kids or wife or anyone else to look after but myself. So I think I'm in a position where I can take higher risks than if I if I were like a father or something like that. Because then obviously I would have to be more focused about my family and be there, know that I could be there for them. And whatever I do and whatever I lose, I will have money to put food on the table for people. But that doesn't mean that I would not take any risks. It just means I have to take a different approach. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just to give a quick uh, quick shout out for uh, the the numbers we were discussing here with ending up in in profits or uh, or uh, fail to profit after x amount of bets with x amount of edge. Uh, there's a good article over at churchofbetting.com dot uh, com which covers this and looks at the variance that's uh, yeah, that comes with uh, with value betting. So uh, I think our conclusion is that we believe it's worth it um, and it's up to everyone to decide whether or not it's a risk they're willing to take. Um, yeah, I mean, just just go accordingly, depending on what you're, you're comfortable with yourself. And what we're just calculating here is the chance of being down. But the chances of if you're up versus if you're down, for example, the chance of losing 500 versus making 500. Making 500 is so much more likely than losing. So you got to look at that also, and not just like get too blinded about those like chances of not being up because the chances of just being stuck at like a couple of bets, it's so much, it's like equal to your chances of being up 10 bets or something, if you are depending on your, your sample size. Yeah, and, and also another point to touch home upon is that this is this was all like based on using a flat stake stake size, uh, which is not something that we believe to be the optimal strategy when betting on sports. Uh, we're advocates of using the Kelly criterion, which is a proportional staking strategy. Uh, it takes into account your bankroll size. It takes into account the edge percentage you're getting. And the odds you're getting so that you'll risk, um, you'll bet more on games where the odds is lower and the edge is higher, and you'll bet less on higher odds with lower edges. So it's a matter of like uh, distributing your money and taking risk where you have a better chance of winning and also you have a higher edge.